Hello, my fellow YouTubers. This is Roy back again. Exciting stuff tonight. Tonight we're going to work with longitudinal waves, and uh, we're dealing tonight with um, basically sound waves, which are longitudinal waves. Uh, they have the um, same characteristics. So, we're going to deal with sound waves tonight for all my amplifier friends out there. And what we have set up here is we've got edge wheel. I guess we might as well click on the oscilloscope, which is hooked up to that PMH. So, the PMH is the pickup. we got the wheel north-south. Uh, the yellow are south, the, the dark are north. And this is Ed Lee Scallon's wheel. We're coming. This is what we're doing. So this will show uh, a heartbeat to the PMH. The PMH has a LED in between the uh, out parts of each one of these coils. The start of each one of these coils wound opposite way to create a north and south. So when this magnet here approaches this iron, or just say when it approaches this iron, this is a south pole, it makes this a north pole. Now the magnets that run through this iron core at this time are charging with, um, with uh, south, so north, they're charging with north um, pole magnets. And as this one starts to go past the metal, it gets to a point where it stretches and then snaps and it creates a whip. There's a rate of change in a whip. So when this was north in the beginning, because it's the opposite pole, because this pole coming up will create the opposite pole in the iron, just naturally, it's the way it works. And then it will move away and then it will snap. And then this side here, the two ends of the coil, it'll have a one way uh, whipping snap then another way whip and snap so there's a rate of change in the middle so with this coil what's going on with this coil so when this coil comes up here and charges this coil well this side which is the negative is putting positive side over here on this side and then the ends of this coil which is wound for it to be naturally uh, one pole and this the other pole when they are in their natural position so if this was wound uh which is let me see look at this this is wound clockwise so this, this should be a north pole and this should be your south pole so when this north is approaching this south this is that's natural pole and when it comes by both of these magnets this is going to stretch out this is stretching out while this is stretching out that's stretching out and what i mean stretching out is stretching out not only the magnetic flux but that it's making like a contact stretch out and then all of a sudden over here and then it snaps and when it snaps it has this to go to and this takes over so that means on this side now it goes back the opposite way so when you look at these two coils they're set up to where the two uh, starts are together here and then on the two ends I have an LED set up in a certain particular way to where it's going to light the LED now, not only will it light the LED, because if I do this experiment without the LED, the experiment doesn't work. So with the LED in, in place, it allows a load to be put on. Not only, listen, the first major load is that in front of these magnets, when they come up on the metal, that's a, that's a dead drop load. There, there's no if, ands, or buts. You've got metal to magnet, and it's going to suck everything it has. It'll suck the chrome off a trailer hitch. It is iron, it is beautiful stuff. When they say when the sun is at its end of its lifetime, the center of it turns to solid core iron and then there's a neutron star and when the neutron star is created, the iron blasts out and it sends iron out into the whole enchilada of the ether and all it gets is dose of iron. And I'm sure iron, since it's super iron, that pretty much it attracts everything and then it somewhat formulate, formulates a rock like we have on this planet, which has uh, 65 minerals, 67 minerals. 
and probably stuff we don't even know about. Anyway, so on the opposite end of these wires, you have the LED. The LED is gonna light, but it's a load, okay? So we're taking from the magnetism and we're dispersing it. This is a, a three volt uh, point zero five, I believe, um, load. So that's on there, but it has to be there. And we're coming out of that and going into the speaker. Now this speaker is hooked up to where the positive is on the positive side, the negative is on the negative side. So every time we turn the wheel, we're gonna get a push and pull reaction, but we're gonna get a sound wave as well. This over here is hooked up to the PMH all by itself. I got the magnet stuck to the PMH in front, so it continues a circle around, but it also has the, 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 the speaker in the front. We're gonna talk about different uses that we can use this. Uh, this is really not important in regards to the wheel turning. This is a whole separate circuit. You got the wheel, make and break, the stretchy medui. You got your coils, which are um, in, in, in the way of what's happening in the iron, but the iron will release that in a way in energy into the coils, out the coils, make the light light, also make the speaker vibrate. When that speaker vibrates, we will pick up, um, we'll pick up stuff over here. Over here I have the, this set up to where it's also uh, starts are together and the ends are together. And it comes out there and goes into the uh, voltmeter. And then out of the speaker comes exactly to the voltmeter. So there's my conjunction, which this one is not connected. So you got to get that in there. Um, pretty much, we're picking up a sound wave. This is a longitudinal wave. We're picking up, we're creating a sound wave through electromagnetic into a sound wave. We're using the sound wave because every yin on here, this is out of phase. Oh, by the way. Here is hooked up on the opposite poles. So this is out of phase from this. Even though this is not hooked up to this system, which out of phase meaning if I hook this up to here, when this is yin and this is yang, -in. when this is yang and this is yin, -in. meaning when it's up, this is down, when it's down, this is up. It's doing now wirelessly. And this is the cool part that I wanna bring into effect with Ed's black box. Leave your comments, guys. I know you guys love Ed Lee Scallon, and so do I. So this is where it comes in with the black box. So this is just a sound wave, a percussion wave, also due to pressure and, and, and mitigation in the pressure. This is what you get. But I'm only bringing you up to the next layer of the onion, which will be uh, scalar waves, which is a formulation of how we're getting into our sound waves, our pressure waves, longitudinal waves. But uh, scalar waves are not those at all, but it, they are uh, their own uh, onion and the own layers to get there. Because once you get to a scalar wave, you're dealing with the zero point energy in the middle of the, um, the, the canceling. Once, once the out of polarity, um, or should I say out of phase, because it doesn't matter where it's, no, out of polarity is wrong, out of phase. So basically your out of phase could be any phase, 120, uh, it could be 90, it, it could be anything in, in the whole spectrum of a circle, uh, a phase. And But the opposite of the phase is what we're talking about with a scalar wave, because one will cancel the other one out. But in the middle of all that happening, you you now broke through the ether, broke through the layer of onion. And, and with that layer of onion there, now you connect it to everything. You're, 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 you, you went above what, what, what we know as norm. In, in physics, you're in, the next, you're in the next layer without a doubt. So here we're not there. Here we're just showing you guys because my sabbatical has been a journey of reading and one thing i didn't do is is uh come in my workshop but what i did do is a lot of reading and what i got interest interested in was tesla a little bit more and then i reflect back to edley scallon dr kowarski uh, uh Shavorsky. I, I he got into crystals which has a steady vibration and it's very important in the whole mist of Tesla and Edley Scallon that the vibration is steady and constant. Just like having a transistor, it's once you put a pulse into it, it's going to react 
constantly. There's no change, there's no variation. When you get into these SIG generators, uh, there's no variation, you're controlling it. Now you amplify from those SIG gens and come into something, which is fine, but I, I believe that now I have to bring in old school and there's my audience because that was where I was my own audience and started with Ed Leeds Gallon eight years ago. And basically from that point, here I am, my own audience. I'm still infatuated. I'm still encouraged. These are a bunch of magnets, but it ain't just about the magnets. And you can look at it in so many different ways. And if you look at it in a full circle, you can, you can be any phase. And pretty much, you know, I, I, I thought I knew it all, and I know nothing still. So we're going to work through the whole thing, where it starts, where it, it takes it, like Ed says, Let's go back to a quarter of Ed. In magnetic current, Ed says, magnetic currents are made by concentrating, then dividing, then shifting the existing north and south pole individual magnets from one place to another. Explanation point. Plain and simple. That's what we're talking about here. But we're getting into Tesla, which realized that when it cancels each other out, I'm a DJ by heart. When you cancel things out, you create a sound a, a area, you a, a pressure that's n like no other at all. Magnets can go through everything. This shows that each magnet is a small orbit than each particle of light. So what we're saying there is it's all about making a smaller orbit that can punch through everything. And there, there is your scalar waves. Your scalar waves is the one that punches through any rock. That's, Co that's Coquina. That's North Florida uh, coral. And then next to it right there is a little rock there is, um, is at, down at least Gallon area. So it's regular coral from that area. It's a difference. Coquina is heavier by far. Ed's way lighter. It's oolite, basically oolite, meaning light. Coquina, that stuff is super heavy. Anyway, um, stop joking around, Roy. Anyway, um, love you guys. You got your um, back to the thing here. So you got your your scaler, and now we're gonna take this right here, and we're gonna turn the wheel. And I got this hooked up to a voltmeter. So it's gonna pick up pressure waves. And not only is it gonna pick up pressure waves, it's gonna create a, a moving field. So if I charge this PMH, which I didn't, this is just a PMH. If I charge it and had a keeper bar on it and put this magnet and then pulled the keeper bar off, is gonna be another video, because I'm curious. I have a lot of questions. What happens if I do that? Keep that in mind, remind me. So now we're gonna to go to the voltmeter. It's running off of here. When we turn the wheel, that's gonna move itself, create pressure waves. Pressure waves gonna pick up here and they're gonna start on the PMH and bounce off each other and then come off with a little amplification into the, now it's only millivolts, it's very little, but we're gonna do another experiment on top of that and kind of see how we can create a wind machine that's not turbine but it's by taking the speaker, the surface area, and having it a constant blow, but a spring back. Meaning that if it kicks forward as much as it's blown back, it'll create a lot of energy in the inertia between the movement. So let's rock here, leave your comments. I hope you appreciate the video. This is a quick one, 14 minutes. We're gonna get out of here in 20 minutes. So I'm turning the wheel. As I'm turning the wheel, you can see the light start to light up. This right here, you can really not see, but it's vibrating, okay? It's vibrating. And over here on the voltmeter, we have a fluctuation of, of, of electric being generated because the sound waves are penetrating the sound waves. Remember, this is out of phase. Don't have to be aiming towards there, but let's do this. Let's move the voltmeter over. And let's go ahead and take the speaker. Let's put it in the chamber. Now imagine if we put this in a vacuum chamber. They say sound cannot penetrate into a, can't work in a vacuum chamber, which it can't, it needs air. But what if we encapsulated this 
in a vacuum chamber? Will it create, notice how when I space this out, we get a high point. You can see that jumping high. So you need this speaker pushing that speaker to create a pulse, which goes into PMH, which is constantly running, coming into the voltmeter. And you can see that that's slowing down big time. The light is flashing. And we also have a oscilloscope pulse. Now we'll stop it and get a straight line. Oh my God, she's not breathing. Let's bring her back to life. Frankenstein here, let's go ahead. I'm just giddy tonight, guys. Sorry. Um, let's get this having a pulse. You got some amp amplification there. We'll turn it down so the amp is set up different. So you guys can see more of a the pulse. And the faster I go, the higher the points are. That means the voltage goes up. Here's the light staying constant. There's this. Uh, we're seeing a fluctuation there of, of sound just penetrating from this shooting up there. If we turn this this way, you can see that the voltmeter is going to have a place to where it's it's humming good. So you'll have volts. The other thing is to, let's do this. This is really cool. That, 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 that thing can turn. It's producing straight up in the air, and it's putting electric out on this side. It's constant, too, there. Three, five, seven. There it is. So, so you can see that just the sound waves, the the how the ether deals with sound with pressure in, in a way that's in sound um that's why i like dr uh Swarsky, i think i'm pronouncing his name right i gotta go back and make sure i'm getting his name right uh Korsky. uh he was in the crystals and he used the longitudinal and also static pressure to create a constant on the crystal which have a constant pressure uh, which would uh, have a constant, uh, which would have a constant frequency, which you can hold true to a number or a place. Time reference. We'll go there. So here you go. So you can see we still got action over here, and that's picking up from the wheel turning. You got your heartbeat. Love it. Cool stuff, right? Let's go ahead and stop this. You can see we flat lines. Nothing's moving there. Nothing's going there. So that was all being done wirelessly through sound in a pressure wave, in a longitudinal wave. Let's go ahead now and do, introduce some air. So we're going to take this and turn a little bit. We're not turning the wheel. you got no volts going, showing up. Now, what if we built a diaphragm? For you guys out there um, that are off the grid and are electronic-wise, if you didn't have the turning of the wheel, but you had wind constantly, and if you had a speaker hooked up, and we could, I can design this and draw it out and put it out there. Anybody interested? Kind of, you know, touch base with me. Uh, Vinny St. Vincent at AOL.com is my uh, email. You can contact me. I will call. I love people. And I love talking about stuff, regardless of where you're at. Love it, love it, love it. So we can build a diaphragm off of this, and it can be more of a bigger one. And we can have it to where it builds up a certain pressure and then it collapses so it'll have baffles in it. And then when it bat when it releases it shoots back and we can have a gauge set up to where we can have so much resistance to where it releases and became becomes an oscillator. In that oscillator, we can say if this was nature and this was a fan of wind, it would blow and all of a sudden now you can see that there's bolts popping up. And all I'm doing now is not turning the wheel. I'm creating a pressure wave by using the fan uh, at a distance. And I'm just trying to make an example, an experiment for you guys to pick up on and like how I'm creating electricity. Now, even though it's in small doses, like Ed says, it really, uh, it, it, it only matters when it really does it. You just stack what you're doing and then you collect. You got to collect. And you can see there just by pressure waves from a fan. Happy fan. Outside, could you could do something. Do you need the PMH? No, you just need the speaker. Speaker itself without the PMH produces the same thing, but 
we're going to do an experiment down the road when you charge the PMH and you have the race car energy running around and it's holding a piece of iron. What happens if you if you put the magnet on there and pull the keeper off? Does the keeper stay to the magnet, which I believe it will, and does it supercharge the race car track? And can, if it was a constant along the coil, the coil would, would not produce any electrons coming from it. But if you were to introduce sound pressure into here, you would you would almost make electronic break on break kind of thing to where it would possibly break or slow down the race car to where it had a difference of potential within itself. Now, I'm just putting this out there. You guys leave your comments. Hopefully you love the sabbatical Roy and um, we're going deeper. We're getting deeper. This is beautiful stuff. Are you kidding me? Look at this. Starting it from the heartbeat on out to a receiver coming out in, 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 in beautiful sound waves, longitudinal waves, pressure waves. And we're really, really, really getting to the next layer of the onion of the scalar wave. The wave that where Tesla drove his car. He drove his car hooked up to a scalar wave. He was able to go all the way up in New York, way up north, and out of his New York, uh, hundreds of miles away, he was able to have a transmitter going with an understudy over there running the transmitter and he was picking it up and scale the waves where he was with no interference, no nothing. And it was a, a, a more like a universal energy where there is no, there is no one source. It's multi-source. So that means when it's yinging, it's yanging twice. It is at least Scallon saying this. Ring doorbell twice. Leave your comments. Love you all. Stay safe. Peace out.